Hello and welcome to postcard one. We're going to make two of these and this is the one with the little beach hut in the middle. So we're starting off with um, the sage green or I'm starting off with the sage green which um, is yarn C for this one and we're going to begin with making a chain of 51. I like to do um, a slip knot for this so the way I do it is to pinch the yarn with the tail going down here and wrap it round so that it goes to the back so it's nearer my knuckles then I pop the hook through and that's how I like to put my yarn onto my hook um, just do whichever way works best for you that's just one option so we're going to start with a chain of 51 so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I like to count into blocks of ten for this but you you just do whichever way is best for you So I'm just going to double check and count my chains at this point. I think I've got 51, but it's always best to check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. And then, so you've 51 stitches plus your extra loop on your chain. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to do one treble into the fourth chain from the hook. So that's one, two, three, four, and this is a UK treble. So you wrap once. I like to go into that bottom loop there and bring that back through, then round through two round and through two it's always a little bit fiddly when you do that this um, chain here actually counts as a treble later on so um, just bear that in mind when you're working across so now we're going to work one treble all the way across into every chain so that's one there I'm going into the next one here so hopefully you can see that there's one there one here Again, people can have slightly different techniques for how they like to work into the chain, so just do whichever you think works best for you. You just need a nice neat edging when you're finished. And this is always the tricky bit because you haven't really got any fabric to hold on to yet, so there isn't a lot of stability in the chain. So it's quite a, quite a slow row is this one for most people. Right, so the very end here, and you do need to work one into that very last stitch there. And then, <clears throat> as I said before, I like to do a quick count. So that includes, I'm including this loop, that's that first stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, which is great. That's exactly what we need. So we'll turn the work around because <clears throat> this time we're definitely working backwards and forwards across the work rather than in a circle. So row two, chain three. And that counts as your first treble here and throughout. So then we want to do another treble in the base. So that's there. So I've now got my chain of three and my treble. <clears throat> and then we're going to miss two stitches. So that's two and we're going to work a treble into the third one. So miss two and we're actually going to do three. Oops. Ended up with an additional loop there from the tail. Let's just move that out and start again. So one, and these are UK trebles. Two, three. So we've got that little starter section and then we've got a set of three. And then what we're going to do is work all the way across where we miss two stitches and then work three trebles. Into that next stitch. <clears throat> Miss two, work a third. I'm going to keep working these all the way across to the end and then I will show you how to finish off this row and cracking on the next one. So we're right at the end here and we've finished with a set of three here. Then we're going to miss two and in this final one here we're going to work another two trebles. So you can either work it into the, the hole there which is what I tend to do or you can work it into the final chain at the top. Just up to you on that one, personal preference, but you'll end up with the same number of stitches. Uh, regardless of which way you do it. So that's row two. We're now going to turn and start row three. So row three, we've got one, two, three chains and another treble in the base of those. Now with this one, we're going to do a V stitch. And so we're going to miss that treble and that treble, so we're missing two and I'm going to work into the top of this one. So <clears throat> we've missed two here and we're going to do a treble and a chain and then another treble. Okay, so I'll show you that again. We're going to miss two stitches there. Then, so I've missed one, two, into the third one like that. and we're going to do a treble and a chain and a treble and then again miss two stitches I've got a treble a chain and another treble and we're going to continue that all the way along the line so you can see there how We've got these sets of three trebles below and you're working it kind of central. They're always a little bit just fractionally offline um, 
from being perfect there but it's consistent and I think it looks good so um you know that's personal personal um, choice there on that one but yeah just for those absolute perfectionists of you you won't line it up exactly that's just the nature of crochet but that is where it's meant to be so we'll carry on to the end and then we'll pick up at the end of the row Okay, so we're right at the end and we've got these three stitches left. So we're going to work two trebles into this final stitch. Again, you can go into this little gap or you could go into the actual stitch. I quite like to go into the gap there. So on your final treble, so at this point, I'm going to cut that yarn off because I no longer need it. So here we are at the end of row three and I'm just at the point where I am going to join in yarn A which is the lovely yellow yarn. So we're going to wrap that round, pull it through the final two to stop the colour bleeding up the side and then we're starting with a chain of three so as you know I like to do where I can the first chain with the tail. I just think it helps to secure things. So there we go, that's one chain with the tail and then one chain with, sorry, two chains, not one, two chains with that. And then we need one treble at the base of that chain of three. So that's there. Now we're going to um, miss two trebles. So that's that one and that one. And then we're going to work three trebles into the V stitch. So into the chain space. So that's one, two, three. Okay, and then we're going to do that again. Miss these two and go into that chain space. And again we're working three trebles. So miss the two into the chain space of the v-stitch. And we're going to keep going like that all the way across the row. I'll just show you where we are with that. So you've got the two to start with and then we're doing sets of three all the way across. Um, Right, so we're almost at the end there and as you can see we've got sets of three all the way across. When you get to the end we need to work two trebles into this final bit there and then we're ready to work row five. So we're going to do one chain and then I'm going to turn this round so the one chain doesn't count as a stitch. So I'm going straight into the first stitch again with a double crochet. So that's a UK double crochet. And we're then going to work all the way across 
in the lemon yarn with double crochet and at the end of this again you need to have your 49 stitches so you might want to just do a quick count when you get to the end. <coughs> So round five is a set of double crochets, um, we're all the way across there and then we're going to turn and round six is definitely a little bit more tricky. So you might want to concentrate a bit harder on this one and re-watch re things if you need to. So we're going to do two chain and that counts as the first half treble. Then we're going to work another half treble into the next stitch. Then, so that one is, is a stitch, which is why I haven't gone straight in there. So that's two, in effect, half trebles. Then three individual double crochet. So that's one, two, three. And then half, two half trebles, one into each of the next two stitches. then a treble into each of the next two stitches so that's one treble two trebles there so we're starting to do a wave pattern here then we've got um, three double trebles coming up next so that's where you wrap twice one three and then we've got two trebles all these are being done into individual stitches and then two half trebles I need a bit more thread here two half trebles so that's what you pull all the way through and then three of the um, double crochets. There. Then two half trebles, two trebles, three double trebles two wraps each round and through two three times two trebles oops half trebles so hopefully you can see the, the pattern the repetition here and then we've got three double crochet two half crochet three sorry two crochet two trebles even back onto the double trebles again. Two trebles. Two 
two and a half trebles. Then by the end of the row, we should have double crochets, so three double crochets and two half trebles. And there, and one into that slightly tricky end stitch. Those are all the rows that we need to do in the lemon and I really should have swapped to my new yarn as we got to the end of that row. So I've just popped my hook back through the three and taken that back. I'm going to pop yarn over there and we're now on with um, yarn E which is the, the creamy coloured yarn. And we're going to do a row of um, double crochet here. So I've pulled that through as before so that we don't get the bleeding going down the side and you do a, a one chain. And as you know, I like to do it with the tail. So then turn that round. And we start with a double crochet right at the beginning. We can pull that tighter and neater afterwards. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So you can see how they're just working across there. We're going to carry on like this till we've done all 49 and we're at the other end. So you will. Um, have to cut more threads than you'd normally like to um, and I'll show you why in a moment but let's just get through to the end and then I'll show you what to do for the next one. So we're at the end of row seven and we are about to join in the opal yarn, which is yarn D. So over the hook. Oops. Keep it a bit tighter than I did. There we go. So we've joined our new yarn in. We need to do a chain of three at this point because we're doing another line that will have that ripple effect in them. So that's one with the tail and then two with the working yarn. So that counts as the first treble and we're going to do one treble into the next stitch. Don't worry if it looks a bit loose at the moment, you can soon pull the edges and tighten that up. So those are the first two stitches. Then we're going to do a double treble into each of the next three and this is to kind of um, do as the exact opposite as to what we've got on the row before. So where we've got the double crochets before, we're now going to have the double trebles. One. Oops, try again. Two. 
to oops. three. Then we're going to have one treble into each of the next two stitches. half treble into the next two and then three double crochet into the next and then we go back into the next sort of undulation of this so it's two half trebles two trebles so each stitch is getting slightly longer and then we've got three double trebles one two three and then back to two trebles Two half trebles, and then we're back to three double crochet. So hopefully you can see how that is doing it differently to last time. So the long stitches are here on this one, they're there and there. So we'll carry on to the end and then I will show you what happens next. So we're almost at the end here so we're on three double trebles and then right at the end we've got two trebles one two and when you get to this point again we need to pick up the cream yarn and I'm cutting this off because with only working one row you end up at the wrong end so by the time we've gone back to here and need to start again you can't just pick up your yarn so on this one there's probably a little bit more sewing in to do than, than on a lot of the others so you pull that last bit through with the cream yarn and again this time you are doing another row of your double crochet so row nine is the same as row seven when I get hold of my yarn. So we start off, you've got your one chain that doesn't count as a stitch and then we've got double crochets going all the way along the line. So just keep them fairly well tucked in and it really helps to highlight all the ripple effect that's going through here. So we're on double crochets all the way to the other end. Pause there for a moment and then we'll pick back up in just a second. Okay so I've just paused for a minute to sew some ends in because I was getting too many little tails and things hanging around so I've sewn a few of the ends in just neatened it up. Um, it's up to you whether you do that part way through like I have or whether you do them all at the end. So we're now on to row 10 
and rows 10 to 13 are exactly the same as rows 6 through to 9. So with row 6, as you might remember, we took the lovely opal coloured yarn, started it here and then we did a chain of two. So I do the one with the tail. Let's just get a little bit away from itself there. And then one with the next bit. And we turn around and we're working back across here. Don't forget, you can neaten the ends up and we will be putting a little board around this. So don't worry. If your ends just feel a little bit messy, we'll be tidying them up later. Um, then we've got one half treble into the next stitch. There we go. And then one double crochet into, I feel I've started too far over there. I'm just going to rework that one because of course my two chain does count as your first half treble. So always be checking, making sure you're lining things up. Remember that we're lining, because we're doing this ripple effect, we are lining things up as we go further on. So, where are we? Um, we've got one double crochet into the next three stitches. So that's one, two, three double crochet, two half trebles, two normal trebles and then we've got three double trebles one two three then we're doing two ordinary trebles and two half trebles and back to doing three double crochet. So as before, you carry that combination all the way along the line to the end and then we're going to swap over back to the cream yarn as we get to the other end. Okay, so we're at the end of the row. I need to break off the yarn. Grab the cream. Join that back in. Lovely. Then, one chain. double crochet. Just tighten all your little bits off at the end there. And we're doing double crochets again all the way across the line. And these are like the little tops of the waves that you can see. Love the representation that we're getting with these colours and shapes.
Okay, so we're at the end again. And we're needing to swap back for the final time to the opal yarn. So here we go. That one. Let's get rid of the others. Bring that over. And said, so don't worry too much about that end bit. We will get it back under control shortly. So we are on row, oops, row eight, which is a chain of three. So I did one of them with the tail there. So I need another two of these. And then let's get my hand all set up. And then we need another treble here. And then a double treble. That's one. Then we've got two trebles. And two half trebles. And three double crochet. Two half trebles, two normal trebles, and we're on to the double trebles again. So continue with that again all the way across the line and what you're actually going to do there is level it up because you've then done four of the different types of ripple effect and that will then, at the end of it, you will be back to a straight line and we're going to do a straight line with the uh, the cream yarn. So I'll carry on with this and I'll see you at the end of the row. There we go, end of the row there, and we've got one final row of the cream to do. So, as before, it's another row of really simple double crochet. So we're right at the end of the row here and I'm just going to take a slight pause now because I'd like to sew some of the ends in. So that's where you should be up to this point. Um, that gets you to the end of row 13 and we'll, we'll come back shortly when I've sewn the ends in and um, got ready to do the next one. So we'll see you in a moment. OK, 
Okay, so I've just taken a, a few minutes here to sew the ends in and neaten everything off. I've just left this one tail here and the tail for the yarn that I've just been working with. So you should have, I've got it the right way up, um, three sets of this sort of turquoise or opal as, as this particular yarn is called. And then you've got four lots of the white crests of the waves. So we're now going to move on to the final bit, which is the sky section of this particular one. And so for this one, um, we're using the lovely bright blue. This is azure, this particular one. And I've finished off as before. You pull through the last bit of the last one. Now, <clears throat> so these are rows 14 to actually through to 20. It's split up slightly differently in the pattern, but basically um, for this 14 to 19, obviously you keep in going and the only change on the 20th row is that you do actually fasten off at the end of it. But basically you're doing the same thing now for the next seven rows. So you start the beginning of each row with two chains and then you're going straight into half trebles. And you're basically going to do a half treble into every stitch of the row below and that's the same all the way across and for all seven rows and to turn at the end of the row you're going to do just a simple two chain when you've got to the end so really nice and simple you can see how that's starting to um, work with that one. I'm not going to make you watch me do seven rows obviously that would be incredibly boring but basically you're going to do the next seven rows with half trebles all the way across when you get to the end do a two chain and turn around and go back and I will see you at the end of row 20 um, to show you what you should look like when you've got to this point and then we'll look at the border. Okay, so welcome back to the next section. So with this, I've just taken a few minutes to sew the majority of the ends in. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to work out which is the back and front when you're doing something that is um, done in, in rows rather than rounds. So for this, I find it useful that this, in this particular case, the, the tail is going to be at your right hand side so if you put it so that the tail is in your right hand then that should have your work the right way around um, as I say, don't get too hung up on it the main difference is you can see this this white line and it's a lot less pronounced there than it is on this side so that's another sort of key to it but anyway that's that's just how that bit um, works so the next thing that you need to do is taking the creamy coloured yarn. Um, for this, we are going to start working in this top corner here. So we're going to join that in and then we're going to make a two chain. So as you know, I like to do one with the tail. And one with the working yarn. Okay. Um, I'm sorry now, it's one chain. What am I thinking? Two chains come in later. So that's a one chain there. And then we're going to put a one double crochet. So that's a UK double crochet. That's where you wrap once and go through both stitches. So that one's in the same place. We're now going to work double crochets all the way across the top and in total, including that first one there, you want to end up with 49 stitches going across the top. So This also helps to neaten the edge and tidy it up.
Okay, so we're virtually at the corner now. So I'm going to work the last two double crochet. And then you do a two chain. Oops, one, two. And then we're going to turn it round. And I've been doing a bit of calculations here. We need to end up with 25 stitches down the side. So I want to start off with seven in these seven rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to start right there, I've decided. One, two. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, mm. four, five, Seven. So you can space these out as you feel the best, but I think about seven in there. Then one in that first cream row. Then I'm going to put two into this section. This is all personal choice, just, just up to you. Another one in the cream, next cream row. One into this turquoise section. Another one into the cream <clears throat> um, I think maybe two into there another one one here couple into this bit and then at this point it's worth having a quick count because you do need to end up with 25 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I need 6 stitches here. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I think that's pretty even down the side. Then we're going to turn, do another two chains, and then you're needing to work a set of stitches across the bottom. So I tend to work my double crochets into that. It's the other side of the starting chain. Other people may have different ideas of how they'd like to work this row and how they work along the other side. <clears throat> but that's, you know, it's entirely up to you. Um, if you've got a, a version that you think works better, please do show us, do share it. Um, and again, you're needing 49, but you should have the original 49. Um, loops to work into so in effect this this row should be relatively easy from a counting point of view so I'll just carry on to the end and then we'll join again at the next corner corner so you've done another two chains there and then we start again down this side um, and again we're looking for 25 stitches so two three four five six seven 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Sixteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-four. That's twenty-five there. Just do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-five. <coughs> do a final two chain and then slip stitch. Oops. There we go. So that's your first round. There. And then from here, we um, need to create the next little bit of the border, which is done mainly in, in half trebles. So we're going to do two chains and then one half treble into each stitch across the side. Oops, I'm doing trebles there, getting a little bit carried away. Start that one again. So we the UK treble, you wrap, go into your hole, pull it back through, and then round and through all three is your half treble. So it's that little slightly fatter, shorter stitch. And And we're going to work this all the way along the side. Okay, so you've got to the end and hopefully you should have your 49 stitches going all the way across. When you get to here, you then need to do a half treble and this is going into the two chain space. So that's a half treble, two chain and another half treble. So that just makes a little bit of a corner there. And then we're going to work all the way down the side with 25 stitches down the side. Again, all half trebles. Again, you've reached the next corner and we're going to do exactly the same again. Half treble, two chain, another half treble. And then we're back to working all the way across here and down to back down to here 
So I will carry on and we'll meet again at this point. So as you get to your final corner <clears throat> and with this one um, you should have done your 25 double crochets all the way down the side and double back two chain and then slip stitch. join. So your original chain of two there is the first one for this corner um, and I'm just going to double check that I've got now my um, 27 stitches here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20, 24, 26, 27 and the two chain corner space. So that is the basic postcard completed and the next thing is just to finish sewing the ends in and then we'll come back and make the lovely little beach hut. So we'll see you again very shortly. Okay, welcome back to doing the beach hut. So with yarn F, which for me is the cherry, I am going to attach the yarn to the hook and then do a chain of 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now with this we're then going to do a double crochet into the second chain from the hook, so not that one but this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry that'll neaten itself up as we as we go along and then we're going to do a double crochet all the way along the row. That's two Three, four, five, six, seven. this little sort of slightly wiggly worm looking thing here but don't worry about that <clears throat> it will flatten as we need it to so then you turn your work and do a one chain and then a one double crochet the one chain um, doesn't count as a stitch 
So we're now going to do 11 double crochet again across the row. So one, two, It's a little bit fiddly. That's number 11. So we've now got a double um, row there. Now, what I actually need to do there, always forget this on the first time round, is change to um, yarn E which then brings the stripe in. So, change that to yarn E, and then we do a one chain, and then we, we need 11 double crochets again. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So make sure that you work into that very first stitch. Again, don't worry if it's slightly loose and floppy looking at the end. We will be doing a bit of sewing ends in and tidying things up. So we're going to do double crochets. Again, 11 of them. All the way across. So you start getting a few little bits of yarn getting in your way. So just be fairly steady and deliberate about what you're doing. And then you turn your work again. Just double check you have done 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yep, definitely. Then one chain and another 11 double crochet. Need to get the red yarn and bring that back through. Okay, don't worry, you'll end up with quite a neat little set at the end there, or hopefully you will. Don't have any long loose pieces here, keep it quite neat. This is going to disappear underneath as um, when we start to sew. So again, you work in double crochet all the way across. So you're going to continue working like this, doing two rows. So a stripe made up of two lots of double crochet going all the way across. And do make sure each time that you've got 11, otherwise your lovely little beach hut will look a bit wonky when you get to finishing. So one chain, and then double crochets straight back in. We're at the end, and again we want to swap yarn, bring 
that through. Don't want it too, too tight, you don't want it to actually concertina the end in, but you don't want a big floppy chain either. And again, we're working another 11 double crochet across here. And you're going to continue in this way of swapping the yarn every two rows um, until we have done 14 rows in total. So that will be five lots of the red, sorry, four lots of the red, can't add up anymore, four lots of red and three lots of the cream um, going up. And on your final one, again, you'll, you'll change to the cream, but we're going to do something slightly different. Um, as we get to that top bit. So you want four stripes of red and three stripes of cream. All worked in this way. Okay, so we've got to row the end of row 14 and um, we're going to start again then with the ecru yarn and we're going to complete the rest of it with the ecru. So from row 15 is the same as before in that you do one chain and then you do one double crochet into each stitch. And when you've got to the end we are just going to turn in the normal way. I can actually now um, cut off the red yarn so I'll just move that out of the way so it doesn't cause me any more problems. So that's my um, 11 double crochet in the cream and then we turn it round, we do a one chain and then we're going to double crochet two together. So that's where you go into the hole, bring that through, go into the next hole and bring that through and then wrap and bring through all three at once and you've actually got rid of a stitch there so you've done a decrease. So that's at the beginning and then we do seven double crochet three four five six seven which takes us most of the way across the row and then we do another double crochet two together so that's bringing you one loop through and you go into the next one and you bring that through two and then round and through all three and it will start to show, it doesn't show immediately but it does start to, to do um, a nice roof shape going at either side in a moment. So again one chain then going into the next stitch we bring the loop back through then into the next stitch bring that back through and complete the double crochet two together again. This time we're going to just do five in the middle <clears throat> That's my 
five and then we're going to double crochet two together so that's bringing that through there and then this final stitch here bring that through bring them through all three you can start to see how we're, we're quite drastically losing stitches here so one chain double crochet two together then we should just have three spare stitches in the middle so one two three and then again we're gonna double crochet two together pull that through turn then one chain double crochet two together again one double crochet and double crochet two together at the other end and then turn again and this time we're going to double crochet three together so exactly the same principle in the hole bring one back through into the next hole bring another one through into the next hole bring another one through so you've got four loops there that's through all four of those and you can see how you've got the nice top shape so we're just going to pause there for a moment because I need to sew some ends in and just neaten that off and then we can come back and do the roof okay so this is what you should end up with it's like that if you turn it over you'll see that you've got a much more pronounced set of loops there so that's going to end up underneath so this is the right side where you can't really see that so the roof edging so with the right side of the work facing rejoin yarn e which for me is the ecru into the side of row 15 so that's down there and you pull that through and one chain so that doesn't count as a stitch and then you want two double crochets in the same place so one two and then we're going to do four to neaten this edge off so that's one two three there four there and then we're going to put three into this top bit here so that's one Oops. a bit difficult to find the actual central stitch there but work what's best for you and then another four down the other side so one two three uh, four we'll go into there and then we want two more double crochet into this last bit here okay so you've actually given yourself there a row a nice neat row of, of stitches to turn with um, so we're going to cut that off pull that through you don't turn the work we're going to start from this side again and work across so this time we need the dark navy blue so with right side facing um, join in yarn G to the first stitch of this row one chain and as you know I like to do that with the tail and then always oh, a bit fiddly this bit I always find the first stitch of the row when you're starting something new so easy to get snagged it's gone very very off-piste there right Okay, so that's one. Second 
second one should be a bit easier to work because you've made the hole already. <clears throat> so that's two double crochet into the same stitch. Um, then one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six. Three double crochet into the top one. One, two, three, and then six down the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then two double crochet into this last stitch. Do remember that you can either sew off beforehand or if you sew off after, you can very much neaten any little bits that need neatening um, as you're sewing in the ends. So I do sometimes leave the ends till a little bit later. So then we're going to turn, do one chain, two double crochet into the first stitch again, and then one double crochet into each of the stitches going up the side. One, two, <clears throat> three, four, three into the top, oops, one, two, three, and then another eight down the other side. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and then so that we match we need to get another two double crochet, one, two, into that final stitch and then we're going to chop that off, pull it through So that is so basically what you'll have at this point. We're then going to just sew the ends in and it just neatens everything, tightens everything up. And then we'll come back in a moment and we'll do the door. Okay, so here's the, what I hope you think is quite a cute little beach up. I think they're lovely on these. And now we're going to make the door that goes with that. So for this, it's really simple. You are going to make a chain of five. And then in the second stitch from the chain, so not that one, but this one, you're going to work a double crochet. And then we're gonna work another three double crochets, one into each of the chains. So you've got four. A little bit small and fiddly but really quick and easy to do. So that is all you'll have at the moment. So you're not going to cut off or anything, the whole thing is done in the blue. So you turn, you do one chain, which doesn't count as a stitch, and then you do four double crochet. One, two, three, four, and 
then we're going to turn and we're going to keep doing that until we've got 12 rows in total. So that's two, so I've got another 10 sets of four to work. Right, so there we go. All you need to do there, need, leave a nice long length because you do need to stitch that <clears throat> onto here. That should fit just about there for you. And then we will sew that then onto the one that we made earlier. So you'll end up with So I'm going to spend a few minutes just sewing that neatly in place and then we will show you at the very end. Okay, thanks. Okay, so here we are with the final piece all done. So this is sewn onto this and then the beach hut itself is sewn onto the background. Um, I've tried to keep as neat as possible on those because um, you will potentially be able to to see it um, although most of the time hopefully you'll be looking just at the front so that is week one completed so we'll look forward to seeing you again in week two bye for now